the most uh, fun, the most effortless is to drop the concept of doership, which means having no concept of what to do and having no concept of what the outcome must be. Even the concept that I must get joy from this. See that to operate from that place of neutrality is very, very beautiful. So that is what is being pointed at here. Now, there are also other, if we speak phenomenally, then I would say that follow your intuition as to what to do. You see? So with the sense, if a mild sense of doership still remains, and the question comes, so what should I do? Allow this intuitive voice, intuitive presence to guide you. And it will, if you're not impatient. You see, impatience makes us go to mind and ideas of what the mind is selling. If you're just patient and we allow intuition to reveal the next steps to us, it will reveal either as a voice which will be heard or a series of events which will make it very clear what needs to happen uh, uh, just a feeling or an urge which can come seem to come from a deeper place so many fall into this trick of not being able to distinguish between intuition and mind and i have said that mind is always operating from a place of need uh, from a place of trying to grasp onto something is it from a place of what's in it for me the mind is always going to rush. Intuition is very, very in the sense that it's not needy, grasping. It's not concerned about outcomes. It's not rushing you. you see? The presence of love and openness and space is experienced. You see? So you don't experience this, this kind of thing with the mind. With intuition, it just more open, more peaceful. You see? So if, whatever mild doership still remains, then we can go to our intuition for guidance on what to do. And if there's no audible voice or there are no visible signs of it, just the surrender to the intuition will make things unfold in an intuitive way anyway. You see? Now, some will feel like even this intuition they're not able to really grasp. And all that is telling them what to do is just the mind. For those then it is prescribed that you follow your peace, you follow your joy. What is it that gives you more space, more joy in, in the world? Follow that. And that is completely fine. So speaking phenomenally, best is to go with our intuition because sometimes intuition can be actually counterintuitive in the sense the intuition can say go jump in that fire which is, which is not jo joyful at all you see? so it can be counter to following our peace or joy it can seem like that but leading to a greater peace and joy you see so so but if intuition is not yet clear then we can we can follow peace we can follow our joy as it starts to reveal itself more and more, we can follow this intuition, which is not fearful, which is spacious, which is not in a rush, which is accompanied by love. There will come a time where you will say that even to use intuition for this sort of personal guidance feels like, you know, using a very subtle instrument to chop a tree or something like that. <laughs> So you will feel like this intuitive presence is just made room for in the sharing of truth, in the availability of its presence for for the rest of the world to experience its presence. And you will not usually, like here, I don't find myself saying, okay, dear Sadhguru, tell me what is the next step I must take or something like this. I just let go of that sense of doership and whatever is unfolding is his doing anyway. You see? So, um, so it will come to that, and then as as Satan starts, you invoke 
the presence of the Sadhguru, when we say Sadhguru Shri Muji Ji Ki Jai, that means we are handing over the words which are going to come through this mouth to the Master's presence. And that seems to be the most beautiful intuition using the body-mind rather than something trying to use intuition. So the intuitive presence which is the Sadhguru itself is now using that, using this instrument to convey, to share the pointings of the direct truths. <laughs>